Oh, there it is. I always like to throw down the champer because I use that quite a bit. And we have one button free, so what else can we pop down there? Uh, if, again, for you guys that use Max, you see you've got an Optimize here and you've also got a Pro Optimize. Pro Optimize is the new version of Optimize that they made for Max. It's better. It does a better job at optimizing your geometry. So if you, if you are a Max user and you use 2016 and later, uh, don't use the original Optimize now. Use the Pro Optimizer. It's much better. Uh, well, let's throw down Melt. Melt. Melt can be really useful sometimes if you want sort of uh, an organic looking shape. But we want chamfer, which is what I was actually going for here. And we're just going to angle our model around. I'm going to turn on shaded faces here. It may make it easier for us to see what's going on. I'm going to throw down three segments. And I'm going to pull back on the tension a little bit just to make it a little bit more rounded. Okay. Now I'm just trying to think, think of what sort of shape I might want to, if I, if I want to change the shape of that at all. Um, 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 um. I don't know if I really want to get too decorative with that piece of geometry because it's um the rest of the model is quite busy. If I start making this uh, these edges edge cornered pieces too busy, it might start to get a bit much. Maybe though. Let's um jump into the front viewport here. I'm just going to throw in edge faces so I can see what's going on. I'm going to throw down an edit poly. Come on, where's my edit poly? And again, I forgot to put my edit poly down and that's one I use quite a bit. So I'm going to change the melt to uh, an edit poly in my set here. Okay. It's, it's just quicker and easier for me to go to my buttons than going through my modifier stack one by one. Let's throw down an edit poly and let's um, let's do a quick slice I think through here. Right, let's go into vertex mode. Select the verts on the bottom. I'm going to go use my scale tool. I'm going to go into my orthographic here. I'm going to uniformly scale that bottom section just in a little bit. Just to add a little bit more interest to that uh, square piece that we have on the end there. Um, I may do it at the top as well. So again, I'm just going to throw out another edit poly, uh, do another quick slice, maybe through here, back into vertex and we'll scale the top in but not quite as much as we scaled the bottom. And that just adds a little bit more visual interest to that otherwise ordinary square looking piece of geometry. All right, let's turn off edge faces. Now, the, before we um, copy that piece over, let's texture it up. So we're going to export it to uh, Substance Painter. I'm just going to call it um, Wood End. It'll only take us two seconds to uh, sub to paint up in substance because it's um, I've created that smart material that I think it was Girl Sniper was talking about yesterday. I hope I've got that name correct. 
which I wasn't aware of with Substance Painter, creating a smart material so that we can keep uh, all of our settings consistent amongst our model pieces. It was a very good tip. Um, we're calling this one Wood End. And we're going to call it Wood End for our FBX export. And all of our settings are correct because we're using our template that we created here. All right, let's jump into Substance. Let's create, we'll, make, we'll save that project, create a new one. Uh, we'll load up the mesh we just exported. Uh, let's <laughs> drop our resolution back to 512 for one small piece of geometry like that, I think. Okay, let's um, just pull back a little. Okay, so instead of me going through and dropping in my underlying yellow wood and then dropping in my cherry wood and then changing the color of my cherry wood, I, I, I've done what, I think it was Ghost Girl Sniper, I can't remember her name, or his name. I'm not making judgments on sex here, uh, but they suggested creating a smart material, which is what I've done. And, and all you do to do that is to create a folder up here, uh, where are we? Here. Yeah. You add a folder, you drag your materials into the folder, you can right click then and, and create a smart material. And I've done that. And we have our smart material. Where is it? My cherry wood is the one that I'm calling it. And all that is, is that it, it already has all of those layers assigned to it, as well as that generator to add that age look. So you see we have this uh, aged look to the wood in some sections. It doesn't look completely new, it's got that, it matches the other parts of, that we're, we're texturing up for the um, model. I just want to change the uh, scaling though because that's way too, um, way too small. I'm going to go into the cherry wood actual texture itself and uh, just change my scaling here. And that looks more natural, like a piece of wood now. And that's really all we have to do, unless we wanted to add any specific um, wearing and weathering to it, which we could do. Let's have a look at that. Let's see if we can, uh, if it might look good with a couple of, um, with a bit of wearing actually painted in. I'll use the uh, dirt brush. I'm just going to start removing some of the uh, cherry wood here from the, from parts of the model. Mainly around the, the bottom section of the base here. It is a very nice tip, and I, I do want to thank uh, the, the user that popped in yesterday because I, I wasn't aware of it either. It wasn't until they, su they suggested it, and I think it may be a new option that's in Substance Painter 2.5. That's what I'm going to say anyway, as to my reasoning for not knowing about it, um, because this is the first time I've used the new version. I was using Substance Painter when it was version 2. Uh, so, oh, yeah, and it was something I, I really wasn't aware of either. And it is a really, really handy, useful feature. If you if you set up a particular texture the way you want it, and you're, you're working on a lot of different pieces of geometry like we are, like railing sections and furniture, or, or, or just other pieces of the same type of model that have to be textured the same, creating a smart material will make sure will make your life much easier and allow you to um, ensure that all of your pieces look the same particularly because we're changing the color of the cherry wood. We're, we're making it a bit redder from the original uh, material here and substance. And that should be good enough, I think, for what we need. Let's um, save this project. Just in case we ever do want to come back to it again. Uh, 
Then let's export our materials or our textures. Make sure we're in the right folder. Uh, again, guys, do let me know if anything sounds off with the audio. If my my the level of my voice is not right, or the music is too loud or too soft. Because when I did the update to to the creative update for Windows 10, I had to reinstall all of this stuff, and yeah, it, it, some of the settings may be a bit off. So if anything's not right or is annoying, let me know. If the music is too loud, let me know. If it's not loud enough, let me know. If my voice is not loud enough, let me know. Uh, I did notice when I played back my stream from yesterday, the music was a bit too soft in the background, so I upped that a little bit today. Hopefully it's not too um, too loud though. And again, we're going to be saving this as a 512 texture because it's that small part of geometry of the uh, it's a small model. Let's jump back into Max and uh, let's assign that texture by opening up our material editor, throwing down a standard material, loading up the bitmap we just exported. That would end. And again, we're always going to make sure we turn on show shaded and show realistic and assign the material to the object. All right, now that's just um, allowed us to cover up that corner section here where the uh, model pieces don't match up completely. Now, you, you didn't have to do it that way. You could have, I could have extended these um, pieces here to meet at the join. But I think adding a piece, another piece of geometry there just will help, just helps to add a bit more interest to that balcony section. Uh, Sniper Echo is completely correct. Uh, yeah. Sniper Echo is saying that uh, he thinks that I prefer the amount of control Mari gives me as opposed to allowing larger texture sizes. You are completely right, Sniper Echo, and Sniper Echo has been one of my regulars for well, since I started, pretty much, which I really do appreciate, dude. So thank you very much for hanging around and, and watching me when I stream, when I do. Uh, he is right. I do prefer to use Mari. Um, I prefer to use Mari because I have more control over my texture as well. I, I, I like painting my textures. That's, now, these days it's very big to use Substance Painter because it's physically based and people like to get things done quickly. And you can do that with Substance Painter. You can texture your models up really quickly because you're not doing any hand painting. It's all being done by the program. You know, you may do some hand painting like I do with uh, wet wearing, but generally all of the textures are assigned physically, they're a physical te physically based texture. So they're assigned to the model. You don't have to do much. Whereas Mari, even though Mari now has physically based materials as well, Mari is more for painting to get to getting getting the look exactly the way you want it by painting your textures in and I really like that. Oh sorry Favola, I missed your question there. Uh he, he, was asking why I chose to use Substance Painter as opposed to Mari. I prefer to use Mari. Yep. Cool. So, and, and so, uh, thank you, Sniper Rekka, for catching Vault's question because I missed it there. Uh, yeah, I do, I do prefer to use Mari. I'm using Substance Painter because Substance Painter is going to be good for things like this, which is wood, where it doesn't require a lot of um, hand painting. If if you look through my previous broadcasts under Twitch or on YouTube when I did the Garden Terrace, that 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 really benefited a lot more from hand painting because it was an outdoor piece of geometry that had been weathered a lot. And particularly with weathering on my textures, I really like to do that by hand. It, 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 you get more of a, a unique look. But one of the problems I find with using Substance Painter or Substance Designer, any substance-based material, is that everything can start looking the same. You're gonna get um, everyone's projects start all looking the same because they're all using the same software and they're all using the same pre-made uh, substance materials here. All of their models will all end up start, start end up looking exactly the same. Uh, that's one of the things I don't like about substance. Apart from the fact that I don't like their interface so much, so I think I find it a bit fiddly to use. Um, the fact that all of the models that people make look identical, really. There's no individuality to it, it all looks the same. 
through no fault of substance and no fault of the artist. It's just uh, an effect of using a physically based material because metal car paint is going to look like metal car paint no matter who uses it. So with Mari though, because you're painting it all by hand and you're painting all that detailing in by hand, you're going to get more of an artistic look to your texture and more of a unique look to your texture. And that's what I really like about Mari. Yeah, for Bob saying he likes to put a personal touch on his work, yeah. And that's why Mari is, is one of the better programs, in my opinion, for texturing 3D models. Because you get that unique look to your, um, to your model. Sniper Echo says, one really nice thing that you can do with Substance and Unreal is instead of exporting the textures, you can import, well, this is true. You can import the Substance material itself and it allows you to control all material values. Uh, even changing resolution without having to go back into substance. That's, that's again very true. And I don't know if you guys remember, but when Algorithmic released um, Substance Designer and Substance Painter, they did it around the same time that uh, Unreal released the Unreal Engine 4, the first version of that. I have a feeling that those two companies, that Epic Games and Algorithmic, worked together to create this system so that it was very easy then to use substances in Unreal. And doing it the way Sniper Echo said in, said, has just said, you can actually, um, instead of me exporting all of my textures out for my materials here from Substance, instead of doing it that way, you can't do it in Substance Painter, but in Substance Designer, you can actually save out one of these pre-made substances, which you can then use in um, in the Unreal Engine. And it will, it, it, basically what it does is it renders out the texture on the fly as the render engine starts running. So you're not loading in individual, you, you save on memory, computer graphics memory, uh, and you also can make changes inside Unreal to your texture in real time on the fly. Instead of going back into Substance Painter, changing it, re-exporting your textures, doing it that way, you can do it all inside of Unreal using a substance that you create using Substance Designer. Uh, so that, and, and it does have the advantage of using less memory that way in the game engine. Uh, it's used a lot in landscape painting particularly as well. Like if you're doing a landscape in Unreal, using a substance design substance as opposed to rendering out textures is a very nice way to actually change your landscape look quickly inside of the editor. Uh, substance designer though is a program I've not really looked into very much. I have I played with it a, a a year or two ago but I haven't really used it very much but it is very powerful I know I've seen when Kiori streams uh, who I mentioned shouted out a thank you to for hosting my channel at the beginning of the stream uh, he, I've seen him use Substance Designer uh, so if you guys are interested in Substance Designer do check Kiori's Twitch channel out when he streams he, do, he tends to stream before me though uh, he's I think in a different time zone to me so you can watch his stream and then you can come and watch mine. <laughs> but if, if you are interested in, in working with Substance, I don't know what, whether he's using that at the moment. I, last time I was watching his stream, he was, but that was a few weeks ago. So he may have changed it to something else at the moment. But that is an advantage of using Substance Designer and Substances in Unreal, if you want to go that route. Uh, again, though, I still would prefer to use Mari and texture by hand just because I want that unique look to my models. I don't want the model look the same. Yeah. It's interesting if you look at um, uh, Mass Effect Andromeda, the, the, uh, cos the, what do they call it? The, uh, not the costumes, the armor that, that the characters wear in that. Uh, if you look at that game and you look at maybe, um, one of the other games like it, what was one that was released? Titanfall 2 maybe? The uh, wearing on all of that armor is exactly the same. And it's all exactly the same because it all comes from out of a substance like this, out of substance painter. It's all done using a generator. Um, so all those models tend to look the same. I, I don't like that. I want my models to look unique. <laughs> anyway, enough of me ra raving about unique looking models. I, I don't want to discourage people from using Substance Painter. You see me using it. It has its place. It is a great program for what it does. I use it. 
I prefer to use Mari though when I'm doing oh, more stuff that re requires uh, individual hand painting of my texture. So I might just take a quick break just for a few minutes guys. Um, but you can see how just adding a, a, those two wooden pieces here at the ends of this have fixed our problem and also helped to add a little bit more interest to that uh, balcony over to that mezzanine balcony section. Um, I will take a quick break. I'll be back in just a couple of minutes. I'll grab a fresh coffee. This one's gone cold as it usually does because I ramble on and forget about it. Um, I'll be back in a couple of minutes, guys, and we'll continue on bringing this uh, model into the Unreal Engine. I'll be back in just a couple of minutes. I'll leave you with my b road back screen. Okay. Got my fresh copy, so I'm good to go. Uh, but the, yeah, but that sniper okay says using substances in Unreal is a, is a good way to go. You've got a little bit less control over painting in, say, if you want to paint in your, um, your wearing and weathering, but it does save on memory. And you can do it all on the fly in Unreal. Let's um, just check over this model one more time to make sure everything is right. Again, I'm not going to change that part of the yellow there because that's going to be completely hidden at the top by the floor and at the bottom by the ceiling. I could completely remove it. And again, you're making a game model. If you're making a game, I would suggest taking it out. There's no point in having polys that are going to be hidden uh, for no reason. But we're going to make a uh, cinematic, so we'll leave it in. All right, let's um, attach our pieces of geometry together and do an export so we can bring it into Unreal. And it makes no difference where you start with your attach. We're just going to collapse our stack. Don't you crash, Max. I'll be very annoyed. There we go. I'm going to save my file here. <laughs> Just to be sure. I'm not following my own rules, you see, guys. Always make sure you save regularly, because Max can be a bit temperamental. And particularly because I turn autosave off in Max. All right, let's do our attach now. Let's uh, attach these columns at the front. Let's attach these pieces at the bottom. Finally, we'll attach our railing sections. Again, you see me doing this by hand as opposed to using this attached list. In Max, I've found the attached list can really mess up your material IDs. Uh, whereas doing it by hand, you're generally pretty safe. So my advice is to always do it, even though it may take a little bit longer, to do it by hand because um, Using this attached list here will nine times out of ten end up with a messed up, your textures are going to get messed up. And it's going to take you longer to undo that than to, and then to have to attach them by hand anyway, so <laughs> save yourself the trouble. I'm just running my mouse over this to make sure I haven't forgotten anything. All right, now I'm going to go into my hierarchy tab again and I'm going to make sure my uh, axes is centered to the model. I'm just going to move it to make sure that nothing gets left behind and I know that everything is attached. Uh, but we'll leave it called mezzanine rail here. And we're going to export it. Now these Unreal models I tend to export into my root directory, not into the directory where I export for uh, Substance. It's not gonna, it, it knows I've already used the name, so I'm going to call this one 
mezzanine rail underscore UE4. That was just Max's way of telling me, hey, you've already saved an FBX, called that. You will not ever write that one again. I don't. If I ever wrote that one, I wouldn't be able to load that substance project back up again. Okay, let's jump into Unreal and import our model. Uh, again, I'm going to make sure that um, Transform Vertex to Absolute is unchecked. It's just telling me about smoothing groups. I don't have any smoothing groups on it. That's all fine. Okay, let's have a look at our um, asset here we've just imported. Alright, there's just a couple of problems with textures happening. Let's uh, fix that up. Okay. I'm just looking through my texture set here. It may have more materials assigned to it than I should have, I think. I'm just going to jump back into Max. And that's because we broke it off from uh, an original asset that was using multi-materials. I'm just going to pull back and use my picker here to select the materials. Okay. Now I'm just looking through to see what materials that lighter colored material is the um is that light section in there so well, I don't want to load up that material it's never going to be seen what I really should do is remove that poly completely uh, which is what I may end up doing I think Again, I would suggest you do this for a game model anyway because um, it's, it's completely hidden and you're just wasting polygons. So let's uh, see if we can take that out. I'm just going to make sure it's not going to affect anything else adversely and it shouldn't. It should be fine. So I'm going to delete that. That'll get rid of that material. Uh, the other thing I wanna, I'm noticing here in the material stack is it's using... Uh, this material here. Let's just open that up so we can get a larger view of it. It's using the material here on the front twice. I think. Yeah. It's using that lighter coloured version and also this darker one. Uh, I really want them all to be the darker one I think. Colour TGA. Wood Deco P Color TGA. So I think the easiest way to fix that's probably going to be... It's using the same texture, so Unreal, I can replace it with the same texture anyway. So I won't make any adjustments here, I can do it in the Unreal Engine. But we need to re-export the model now that we've removed that uh, obsolete texture, so... Let's just make sure by doing a reset X form, which I always like to do anyway. I forgot to do it the first time, just to be on the safe side. We'll re-export again.
Okay. And let's re import it in Unreal. You see we got no error messages this time. That was fixed by doing a reset on the X-Bomb. And you see it's also fixed our um the texture showing up here on our railings. But we have to make some uh, adjustments to the materials in Unreal because it's not using any normal maps or roughness or any of that type of thing. So we have to fix that up. Before we fix that up though, what we need to do is we've already created these railing sections here for our uh, centerpiece, this square piece of railing. So as opposed, instead of creating a new material, we'll reuse that material. So I'm going to open up the um, object again. We'll just move it up to the top here. I'm going to jump into my materials for my building. Find that material we've already created. I think it's this one. I'm just going to open it up to make sure. It is this one. That's good. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> make sure I open up my uh, asset again. Okay. Let's swap out those two materials here. It's um, these two here on the bottom. Even though the material is used twice, it's only being uh, loaded into memory once. So you're not wasting any memory by having it here twice. All right. Let's uh, make sure we save our changes. And you see that Unreal is smart enough to know that we've used the material twice and it's uh, consolidated it to one material slot. Okay, let's just pull back here. Now I want to make some adjust adjustments to the materials for that new piece of geometry. So uh, the same with this uh, decorative piece along the bottom. We've already created a material for that. So let's swap that out. I believe it's this one here. I'm sliding it up to make sure. It is. So let's uh, drag that one into our slot. Let's save our changes. All right, let's look at our other materials here now. I'm just opening up one of the old ones just so I can remember what goes where. So ambient occlusion is red and green is roughness. Okay. Let's start with this one. Uh, again, I'm just going to control C and control V to copy that texture sample two more times. Let's uh, import the textures. Just before I do that, I want to double check the name of that. That's um, a mezzanine rail. Okay. Let's start with the mezzanine rail textures. We want the normal map and the occlusion roughness and metallic, which is all combined into one texture. We're going to swap out the normal map here and the occlusion, metallic and roughness here. Again, we're going to pipe our normal into our normal. We're going to pipe the red channel because this is a multi-material. Again, don't get confused here because it's basically using three different textures combined into one. Unreal uh, Substance Painter does that to save uh, texture memory. Uh, for Bolt's asking, so is everything that you have loaded in Unreal right now the updated version of them? Yeah, it is. All any of the assets you see in Unreal here is the updated versions that 
as we worked on them in Max, we exported them and brought them in like we're doing now for the uh, new railing section. Um, do, do bear in mind though guys that, like I said, Substance, when it creates uh, a texture set for the Unreal Engine, puts three different textures in the one texture map to save on memory. So we need the red channel to uh, ambient occlusion. We need the green channel to roughness. And we need the blue channel to metallic. Let's save our material there. Uh, so yes, no, you're right. All of these assets you see here for Volta ones, we've already um, done some changes to. I've made them a little higher poly or changed the textures on them and we've brought them into the Unreal Engine. So they're ready to go when we start rebuilding our building in Unreal. All right, let's move on to the next one here, which is this material. And this one is uh, wood end, okay. So again, I'm just going to control C and control V to paste in two more texture samples. Uh, we're going to import that wood end material that we saved out from Substance Painter. We want the uh, normal and the combined occlusion, roughness and metallic. Again, we're going to use the current texture for the normal map. Select and use the current texture for the um, combined map. Pipe our normal into our normal. And our red channel into ambient occlusion, green channel into roughness, and blue channel into metallic. Wait for Unreal to, to do that and save our shader. Okay. Now I'm just trying to see if we've already used this, um, made this texture as well. I'm going to jump into my materials here. And I think we have, we've already done this one, wood post pillar mat. So we can uh, open up our asset again. Back into our materials we've already created. I'm just going to drag that one up there because we've already made it. Uh, everything else should be good though, I think. Save our file. And just zoom around here a little bit and get a bit of a look at our um, asset in the material view. Uh -huh. now, I'm, I'm seeing... Um, a different color here. I want to work out why it's done that. I'm going to jump back into Max really quickly. Which is odd because you can see here I, I actually have the correct color on that part of the material. Let's jump back into Unreal. I don't know why it's using a different color. It could be because of material name. Let's have a look through our material stack here. It looks to me like it's using this one here. Let's uh, drag this one that we've already made into its place to change the color back to the way it should be. Okay, now we can zoom around our model here a little bit. And we have our asset ready to go. Let's um save that and we'll, we'll drag a copy into the viewport here. It'll be easier for us to look at that, to look at. There we go. It's going to deselect that by hitting the escape key. So now we have our, um, our mezzanine railing that goes at the back there finished and ready to go. So it's ready to be dropped into the level when we start rebuilding the building inside the engine here. Right. 
Uh, I'm just dropping these in here as I make them, just so I can look at them. Uh, I'm going to be deleting them all, though, when we start actually building the building. I'm only doing this so that I can make sure everything looks correct. And we haven't rebuilt the lighting yet either, which um, we should do. It would improve the look, but because we're not actually, because we're going to delete them in the end anyway, there's really no need. Let's uh, do a save all here. And let's jump back into Max. Now, what I want to do here is, I'm, I'm using this as one piece of geometry, just out of, for ease of use, when I start rebuilding the building. But I know in that building, there are parts of the model parts of the interior of that building where I need small sections of just railing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into sub object mode and I'm going to select these side pieces. I may do this from the top as well. I'm holding down the control key and doing a marquee selection. So I don't have to go in there and do it all by hand. So I'm selecting one small section of railing like that. I'm going to do a detach as a clone. We're going to call this one um, SML for small single rail. 